Just like how every era in history has its legendary figures, history also has its imitators. People get inspired by the greats and try so hard to imitate them, only to get nowhere close enough. Napoleon Bonaparte was one of those legendary figures, and one of his notable imitators was his nephew, Louis Napoleon, later known as Napoleon III. As revolutions spread across Europe in 1848, the memories of the French Revolution were echoing throughout the country. After the 1848 revolution overthrew the monarchy to establish the Second French Republic, Louis Napoleon would be elected as the first president, winning 74.2% of the vote. Louis Napoleon had ambitions similar to those of his uncle, and he wanted to restore French glory. At one point, he even becomes emperor, but sadly, Napoleon III wouldn't come anywhere close to his uncle's glory. In a way, he would become the failed emperor. Upon being elected president in 1848, Louis Napoleon carried with him lots of popularity from all sides. He was a religious and traditional figure when it came to values of family and property, but he was also very much in favor of helping the poor. He wanted to bring jobs to the unemployed, help those of old age, and introduce laws that he said would not ruin the rich, but would still bring the well-being and prosperity of all. Naturally, this approach appeased both the revolutionaries and the traditionalists. Upon taking office, he took a title of prince president rather than mere president, and was eager to advance his ambitions. Louis Napoleon quickly had his first opportunity to show foreign strength. As the 1848 revolution spread to Italy, Republican forces, no relation to the political party, but rather people whining a unified Italian republic, took control of the Papal States. As a devout Catholic, Louis Napoleon sent French forces to Rome to drive Garibaldi out and defend the Pope. This didn't go well with the pro-revolutionary populace in France. To compromise, Louis Napoleon had the Pope adopt the Napoleonic Code and other liberal reforms. However, this wouldn't be good enough. A brief uprising of radical Republicans and socialists in 1849 attempted to remove Louis Napoleon from power. They quickly failed and ended up backfiring their causes, as it allowed for conservatives to win control of the French Assembly. Once that happened, the French Assembly then passed a new law that essentially removed universal male suffrage for Frenchmen. 3.5 million French people had lost the right to vote, and Republicans now had a much smaller chance of winning seats in the Assembly. With Louis Napoleon limited to one term, he realized he would have to act decisively to get his programs done. Louis Napoleon thought he had the support of the people, and so he decided to do a coup against his own government in 1851, on the anniversary of the Battle of Austerlitz. He succeeded, but also imprisoned many Republicans doing so. He also ended freedom of the press, essentially giving newspapers a three strikes and you're out rule if they dared publish anything critical. But Napoleon wanted to make sure he had a popular mandate, so he made a referendum asking if the people loved the coup. 7.4 million said yes, 1.4 million conveniently abstained, and 641,000 said no. Naturally, Louis Napoleon's critics immediately questioned the legitimacy of such a dubious referendum. But Louis Napoleon didn't care. Napoleon would end up giving amnesty to most of the people he arrested after a few years in prison, but some of them, such as the famous Victor Hugo, refused and ended up going into exile instead. Eventually, in 1852, he had consolidated power enough and had another referendum on whether he should become the new emperor of France. This referendum was also very questionable, as 97% voted yes, which is hilariously improbable. So now Louis Napoleon was Emperor Napoleon III, and the Second French Republic had become the Second French Empire. So why Napoleon III, as opposed to Napoleon II? Well, there was already a Napoleon II. He existed as Emperor of France after Napoleon abdicated, but it was only for a few days, which is why you've never heard of him. But regardless, Napoleon III was now the new emperor of France. Immediately, Europe began worrying he'd be too much like his uncle and try to conquer Europe again. However, Napoleon III first focused on a lot of infrastructure building. In fact, he did a good job improving France internally, and he helped the economy too. Napoleon III also helped coordinate the building of the Suez Canal along with the British. Napoleon III also ended up marrying a woman named Eugenie, and they had their first son. Keeping the family tradition of stroking the ego, he naturally named his son, you guessed it, Napoleon. The only major foreign policy adventure he did in his first few years as emperor was intervene in the Crimean War. However, in 1859, he had the first chance to expand the French Empire. The Kingdom of Sardinia was on a mission to unite Italy and wanted to take Lombardy Venetia. Sardinia had worked alongside France in the Crimean War and asked France for military assistance. Napoleon III agreed in exchange for some territory. The two nations took Lombardy, but not Venetia. But Austria still lost overall and signed a weird treaty where they refused to cede land to Sardinia, almost out of stubborn embarrassment. So, in the treaty, they gave Lombardy to France. All right, Napoleon III had done his first conquest. The French Empire has been restored to glory. Too bad, as promised, France just gave it to Sardinia. So, what did France get in exchange for it? The border territories of Savoy and Nice. Okay, so not quite as glorious, but it's still expansion. It's something, right? However, Napoleon III wanted to do something that his uncle had failed at. Expansion of power in the Americas. 
When Napoleon I tried expanding power in America, it failed miserably. Napoleon III developed a grand scheme for the Americas. Napoleon planned to put a Habsburg on the throne of Mexico of all places. The idea of an Austrian in charge of Mexico was not something that would go over very well, so Napoleon III sent troops to make sure he got that power. Yes, France invaded Mexico of all places. So how did that go? Well, you do know that the entire Cinco de Mayo holiday celebrates how Mexico defeated France, right? Well, yeah, there's a reason why they celebrate that. France installed Austrian Habsburg Maximilian I on the throne of the newly established Second Mexican Empire in 1863. However, French and pro-imperial forces never took full control of all of Mexico, and after a little under four years, Maximilian was defeated and executed. Yikes. Well, there goes the idea of influence in America. What now? Well, in 1866, Prussia had defeated Austria in the Austro-Prussian War. Everyone was shocked by the results. Napoleon III wanted to make sure that France was strong in the face of a new sudden continental power. So in 1867, he decided it was time to expand. This time, he was going to get really ambitious. He was going to purchase Luxembourg. His uncle may have conquered half of Europe, but he, he was going to purchase Luxembourg. In all seriousness though, Luxembourg had a lot of good fortifications, so at the very least it'd be a good defensive line for France in case they ever go to war with Prussia. However, Prussia began making a fuss over the deal. Since the other great powers didn't want another war involving Prussia, they kind of just awkwardly glared at France until Napoleon III agreed to back off from the deal altogether in exchange for making sure that Luxembourg could never be annexed by Prussia. Well, so much for expansion then. Prussia would prove to be the bane of Napoleon III's existence. Another crisis arose in which the King of Prussia tried to install a relative on the throne of Spain. Napoleon III acted strong and said no, but Bismarck persuaded Wilhelm I of Prussia to try anyway. Napoleon III said no again, and originally Wilhelm put his own foot down on Bismarck and told him he would back off and stop antagonizing Napoleon III, but Bismarck wanted to antagonize Napoleon III anyway and altered a letter to where it acted like the diplomats were hostile to each other when they really weren't. This was enough to make Napoleon III angry, and war was declared on Prussia. Napoleon III did not handle the war very well. Physically, he was growing more ill, and mentally, he didn't feel very optimistic about the war. He felt he was too old to go on such a campaign. Prussian forces invaded France and eventually met up with French forces in Sedan. Napoleon III was surrounded with his army, and they were forced to surrender. With this, the empire was essentially over. France became a republic again, but would still end up losing the war. The Prussians would end up taking Paris after a long siege and then crown Wilhelm I as the first German emperor of the new German empire. In many ways, Napoleon III is the type of figure who deserves a golden star sticker that says, well, you tried. He tried to live up to his uncle, but despite having the same name, home, and even becoming emperor, he was never able to come close. In the end, he had quite a humiliating end to his rule. He moved to Britain in exile, but only lived another couple of years before dying of illness in 1873. The very last Bonaparte ruler was dead. If you liked the video, please click like and subscribe and be sure to use that notification bell so you can actually see my videos. And I will see you guys next time.